Welcome to the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. We invite you to join in prayer with your Catholic neighbors and friends as we celebrate the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment, first of all, to call to mind our sins and ask the Lord's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome worthily the Paschal mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me, Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the facade of the temple was toward the east, and the water flowed down from the right side of the temple south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then when he had walked off to the east, with a measuring rod in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and had me wade through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand, and once more he made me wade, wade through the water, which was now knee deep. Again he measured off a thousand and had me wade. The water was now up to my waist. Once more he measured off a thousand, but there was now a river through which I could not wade, for the water had risen so high it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, Have you seen this son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river where he had me sit. Along the bank of the river, I saw very many trees on both sides. He said to me, this water flows into the eastern district down upon the Araba and empties into the sea the salt waters which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature can, that can multiply shall live, and there shall be an abundance of fish. For wherever this water comes to the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in distress. Therefore we fear not, though the earth be shaken and the mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst, 
it shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The Lord is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A clean heart create for me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate a pool called in Hebrew Bethsaida with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, while I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat, and walk. Immediately the man became well, took his mat, and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath, so the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, who is the man who told you, take it up and walk? The man who healed, who was healed, did not know who he was, for Jesus had slipped away since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin anymore, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews, that Jesus was the one who made him well. Therefore the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In these dramatic healing stories in the Gospel, I oftentimes have a kind of curious reflection or a wonder. Here's a man who had been ill for 38 years. For much of that time, he may have been laying each day by the pools of Bethsaida. He may have been waiting for a cure. Maybe he was depending on the generosity of others if he could not work. But here Jesus comes to him this day. And Jesus, first of all, asked him, very interestingly, do you want to be well? That's a good question worthy of another sermon, and that is, in our own lives, even though we know that God calls us to freedom in the gospel, do we really want to let go of our sins? Do we really want to be well? Sometimes maybe not, because of what I'm really going to talk about today. He said, no. He said, yes. And he says he said, yes. He said, I keep trying to get down to the water, but I can't get there in time. So Jesus said to him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. And the man was cured. What I always wonder about is the next morning, the man had a full day. He was, being, he was probably the center of attention. He's being questioned by the high priests. He goes home tired, 
happy, rejoicing that he can walk, goes to bed, then wakes up the next morning, kind of sits up a little bit in his bed, maybe reaches for his crutches or something, and then realizes he doesn't need the crutches. So then he gets dressed and maybe he reaches down to pick up his mat and begins to walk out the door and realizes, wait a minute, I can't walk out the door. I mean, at least I can't go down to the pool of Bethsaida because I'm cured. What am I going to do now? I can't beg. Oh, no, I've got to get a job. I've got to kind of take over my life in a new way. Sometimes, and at least maybe one of the reasons Jesus asked him, do you want to be well, is do you understand that healing brings with it, yes, a great healing in your life, a new strength, but also new challenges. There's no doubt a man who's been ill for 38 years has developed a pretty ingrained routine in his life. Well, that speaks to us a lot today. Because for many of us, our routines are being blown up in so many ways, so many aspects. And we find ourselves kind of lost. Now, oftentimes we use the root word routine in a bad way, but routines can also be good for us. They're the way we structure our lives around our values. They're the way we live out our values and, and kind of hold ourselves to commitments or are held to our commitments because of the necessary routine. A husband and wife's love over children are oftentimes, they're bound to that because the children need their attention and help and support. They need their guidance. And if, even though they might want to take a break one day, they're on 24-7. It's a regular routine, and so they shape that routine around the needs of the children and also around their own needs. And part of the routine is that many, for many of them, the kids go off to school, and ah, take a breath now. Routines at work help us keep order in our lives and help us perform the job we're called to do. Sometimes our routines are developed to help support the best of who we are. We have routines that help us keep from becoming engaged in maybe too much drinking or too much gossip. We have routines in our life that we put in, prayer, reflection, to build up our soul and strengthen us. In fact, Lent is all about kind of tweaking those routines to help them better support what it means to be a disciple who believes in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We also can have bad routines, routines that support our sins, routines around gambling, drinking. Maybe it's routine for us to get on the phone and call and gossip each day because it supports some type of a, a need in us to build ourselves up. Maybe anger at someone or unforgiveness in our family has created a routine disconnect with someone. So routines can be good and they can be bad. But there's no doubt that now they've all been blown up. And so we need to take some time to reflect on the new reality we're experiencing now so we can capture the good routines in a new way, the routines that were meant to support the goodness, the virtue, the value, the, the demands of love of our life that we want to be faithful to. Help your children develop a new routine in their life as well so you can support the best of who you are, the best of what your family is. Also be sure that you are developing supports to help you from falling into bad routines or even going to those as the primary routine of your life. That would be a terrible thing to consider that all you have to do is binge watch TV for the next three, four, five weeks, and that'll get you through. We need to call upon the Lord's help to guide us and direct us so we can build up the good routines in life. But something else is happening when we break routines. Break routines, in fact, that's what we do when we go on retreat. We step out of our routine life into a new routine where we're given spaces to reflect upon who we are, where we're going, what is our relationship with God. As our routines get broken and we'll cast into moments of insecurity and doubt about the future and 
These are moments when God can speak to us too. Make sure that one of the routines you place into your life in this very turbulent time is some time for prayer, reflection, to examine the feelings of your heart, the dread, the fear, the concerns, to remind yourself that the Lord is with you, remind you you have loved ones around you, remind you there are good things in the world and good things still in your life. Look upon the simplest things as things that they give thanks to God for. Be aware that many of the things you're having to cast aside in the end are fairly superficial. Some are not. A job is not superficial. But visiting your parents when you would like to and you can't is not superficial. But there are many other things that are. Stop worrying about them and begin to pick up in that space a renewed reminder of how blessed you are. And after you've given your life all the routine it can take and you still have big spaces, fill that space with help for others. Reach out, call someone on the phone, reach out to members of your family you haven't spoken to, even go beyond brothers and sisters to aunts and uncles, especially elderly ones that may be alone. Reach out and connect. The more we actually lift our eyes and live in the love of the gospel, the joy of the gospel, the more our hearts are lifted as well. Jesus says the one who gives their life away is the one who finds it. That's the way of love. And that's the way that heals us and fills that final piece of the routine of our life that will bring joy and will infect every other part of it. The poor man that was healed was now poor. The great gift he received was healing. But with that healing came new responsibilities, ones he was probably happy to embrace. Let us embrace this new time with new routines, new ordering of our life according to our virtues and values and our faith. Let us call the Lord into our heart to strengthen us and give us hope, and let us continue to move forward with the confidence of knowing God is with us. We, our routines have been broken, but God is there to heal them, recreate them, and be with us along the way. Let us now join our prayers together, trusting in God's mercy and love. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he might continue to be a voice to all the world, calling us to prayer and hope in this time of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our caregivers and first responders who continue to work among us for our good, that God may protect them and keep them healthy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders, for our governor, our president, for all those who are involved in the national effort and international efforts, that they be given wisdom and selflessness in this pursuit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That for those of us that wish today, our governor has called us, he himself is going to make this a day of fasting and prayer, that we take some time today to fast and pray and that we might ask God's mercy and love upon us and his divine assistance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our loved ones who have died, that God will bless them with eternal life, and that their prayers before your throne might also sustain us in this time of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear these prayers we place before you, we pray them with confidence through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept your sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer to you, Lord, these gifts which you yourself have bestowed. May they attest to your care as creator, for this is our mortal life and affect in us the healing that brings us immortality. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember, your, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer if you with someone a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, both here and spiritually, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul will be healed. Persons who are unable to receive the Eucharist are urged to unite themselves spiritually with Christ's sacrifice. Ask the Lord to make himself present with his grace and blessing. The following prayer, composed by St. Alphonsus Liguori in the 18th century, is a good model for your own prayer. O oh my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Bow down now for the blessing. Grant, O merciful God, that your people may remain always devoted to you and may constantly receive <clears throat> from your kindness whatever is for their good. Sustain them in this time of need, give them hope, and may they come together as one family, supporting one another, knowing that you are always in our midst. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the hope of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for sharing in our presentation of the Mass. The Mass is brought to you as a service of Catholic Life Television, a ministry of the Diocese of Baton Rouge. Your participation, your prayers, and your support make this ministry possible. We'd like to hear from you. Please write us at Catholic Life Television, Post Office Box 3015, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70821.